I'm Dave Ingerbretson, and along with Leroy Hyatt, we'd like to welcome you to another edition of Fly Tying, the Angler's Art. Today we're going to do two imitative patterns, the Quill Gordon and the Quill Gordon Nymph, and we're going to do another steelhead pattern uh, from our area of the country, local, the yes. uh, Beats Me. And we'll mm -hmm. tell you more about that when we get there. Now the Quill Gordon is another early eastern hatch. Uh, comes on along about the time of the Hendricksons, along about the middle of April. It usually doesn't last quite as long, but it's another one that the eastern fly fishers really like to see because it signals the start of trout season. And again, it's a case of uh, to be really prepared to meet this hatch, you need both the dry imitation and the nymph. And, the nymph. and we're going to start with the dry imitation. Uh, so, Leroy, why don't you tell us about the Quill Gordon? Okay, we'll use the uh, gray dun hackle. The body material may be hard to see here. What this is, I've just laid out a couple little stripped uh, peacock eye quills. That will become the body. We'll go back and use, like before on some of these eastern flies, we'll use the lemon wood duck for the wing. And I'm going to use a black 6 aught thread. I have a standard dry fly hook in the vise. I have mashed the barb on it. I'll go ahead and start the thread here in the front section and get ready for the wing. For this now, as we said before, the original pattern called for this barred wood duck, but most of the viewers probably won't have access to wood duck. It's fairly hard to come by and it's fairly expensive. So Unless you live in the east and yeah, are a duck hunter. Right, yeah. a good substitute for it is uh, mallard flank feathers, mm -hmm. which are normally gray and they've been dyed a, a lemon yellow. Mm -hmm. And that works just fine. Now I'll tie this in very long and then just pull it through. Now I have left that entire hackle stem in there. It will make that wing a lot more durable than if I were to clip it out. Now I'll go ahead and clip this bottom section off and then stand the wing up. Take a couple of wraps in front just to make it stand up nice and then I'm going to divide it. I'll get it as even as I can and then just figure eight through it. And there's the wing section. Now again we might remind people that we put that wing in about one third of the hook shank, mm -hmm. length of the hook shank, shank back, back from the, the eye. eye. And it's and the length of it should be roughly as long as the shank of the hook. We want it to stand up about one fourth taller than the hackle. That's correct. The hackle will be about uh, twice the gap of the hook. Yeah, one and a one half, and to, half two. to two. Mm -hmm. And the wing should just project a little bit above that. Now what I'm going to do is just take a few fibers from this gray section of gray uh, hackle again, and I want this to be about the length of the shank of the hook. So I'll just stick it between the wings and measure it out. Looks pretty close, and tie it down. Now I don't know what, what you're doing there. I can't see as well from here, but Especially on these quill-bodied flies, it's important to have a, a smooth underbody. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And so what I try to do is not cut the tail off short, no. but I try to have the butt I of the tail to the go wing. up to the butt of the wing. That's correct. And, and then you've got a nice smooth underbody to wrap that quill over. Yes. Now what I've done, I'll take this, I didn't like that one. I'll see what this one will do. I'll take this hackle stem. Uh, I mean this eye peacock stem. eye. We might tell people. Uh, when you have an eyed tail feather from a peacock, you've got the hurl along the stem, mm -hmm. but then you've got the hurls in the eye, and it's the eyed ones we want to use. And that's what I've stripped and out the here. The reason for that is when you strip it, uh, it has a light and a dark band yes. to it, which the other ones don't have. And I'm sure the camera can see that light band Should coming be able up to. now. Now, we might tell them how you strip it. There are several different ways to strip it. Uh, sometimes you can lay it on, a, on the uh, table and hold it between your fingers, uh, press it Take against the table using the eraser. Pencil, pencil. eraser. Mm -hmm. uh, if you're going to tie a lot of these, you can actually take a full eye and uh, put a little saucer with Clorox or some kind of a Very beach mild. In it. And uh, don't leave it in there long. No. Swish it around no. and rinse it and swish it around and rinse it uh, until the fibers have come off. Mm -hmm. And also that helps bleach the light part lighter. Right. right. It gives you more of a banded mm -hmm. effect. And then uh, when you're done, rinse it very well underneath in. the fresh water mm -hmm. and blot it dry on, on uh, paper towels. And then you'll have and, enough to last you for and, a long uh, time. Yeah, you will. Now I'll put the hackle in. I have the body material in already. I'll just lay that stem between the wings, 
stand the wings out of the way, grab that stem again in front. Maybe I'll say one more thing about that body. You know, many people, when they use this type of body, will counterwind it with a fine gold rib mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Uh, just to make it more secure. What I like to do is coat the body with head cement, uh, which makes it more durable, yes. but it also uh, intensifies and deepens the color banding. And I will do that as soon as I yeah. get this hackle yeah. on. I think that's a good idea, and I, I just do it all the time. Now, I've wrapped about three wraps behind the wing, and I've come to the front and wrapped about three wraps there. I'll clip this hackle off. Couple more wraps just to make sure yeah, it's all secure. You use a there. single hackle this time. Some people will use a double hackle. Just uh, happen to have a, a a longer one off of a saddle that worked yeah, very well. It just depends on your material. Mm -hmm. Now I will take a little bit of head cement. I'm going to do two different steps with this one. Get a little on here. The first thing I'm going to do is do the body material. Do and you that can first see, to give it a little more time to yes, dry. And you can see that it just really lightens that fly. It just makes it just shiny. And tougher and deepens the color. Mm -hmm. Now, do you like a fairly thin head cement? Yes, I do. I do, it, too. It, and uh, it soaks in better, it does the job better, and it dries a little more quickly, too. So. Well, uh, but you can get it also too thin. The thinner it is, the less actual glue there is in it. Yeah. But I do like it on the thin side yeah. because it will run a whole lot better. And there's the finished fly. We've used the lemon duck for the wing. We've used the gray hackle for the tail and hackle assembly, and a strip peacock eye for the body. Well, now we've finished tying the uh, Quill Gordon dry fly. Perfect companion for that fly, of course, would be the uh, Quill Gordon, Gordon Nymph, I forgot the name of the fly. <laughs> Quill Gordon Nymph, and when you're meeting and matching the hatches, it pays to have both versions. Mm -hmm. Because uh, when the hatch is building, the fish are probably feeding Depending on the, on the stage. stage hatch, yeah. sure. In uh, different places in the river, the fish might be feeding on one stage mm -hmm. or the other. So it pays mm -hmm. to have both in your box. So, uh, Leroy, why don't you show us the Quill Gordon Nymph? Quill Gordon Nymph will we'll have another one of the Cree feathers that we will use for this. Now, if you don't have Cree, we can use the ginger variant, which yeah. will work very well. And that'll be for the hackle, the for legs. The, for the legs, yes. Uh, the tail material, you can see that the ginger variant is not marked as darkly as the Cree, but either one will work well. The tail will take some sections from a dyed yellow mallard flank. The body material will be a dark brown dubbing. The wing case or wing pad will be dark turkey. And then I'll use a brown 6 aught thread. I have already placed a size 12, or uh, this may be a 14, I don't remember, hook well, in the vise. Well, the pattern's usually a 14. Okay. And I'll again dress the whole hook shank. I like to do that on every fly. It will keep the material from rotating. We'll take this dyed mallard flank, get rid of that fuzz on the bottom, and I'm just going to take a very few fibers from it, and which I'll tie in for the tail section. I don't want it real long, maybe not quite as long as you would have it on the dry fly, but I at least want it out there where it will be noticeable and spread out a little. And I think your point of keeping it sparse is a good idea, yes. because the tails are not very prominent mm -hmm. on nymphs. Mm -hmm. And now for the dubbing, again we'll go back to the standard old fuzzy thread, not much material. If you uh, if you can see globs on there, you've got far too much material. That's the way the, uh, the taper can be built for this fly. And uh, the thorax, of course, will be dubbed considerably heavier, but for the body, I like to have it on the lighter side. Now, that may not be enough, but we'll run it up and see what happens. Start back here to the rear and just start wrapping forward. Now I'll have to go back over a little just to keep that body shape going, the taper that I'm looking for, and run up to where the wing case. You can case. see you're building a nice taper into mm -hmm. it, and that's, that's really appropriate. And I ran out of dubbing, but that's fine. It's not hard to add more. Mm -hmm. Just a little bit more, and it should yeah. work. The trouble is with if you put too much dubbing on too long a thread, 
then you can't wind it. Oh, yeah. You're out so far. Oh, sure. I would much rather do it in a couple of short Sta sections. Stages, yeah. yes. Now I'm to the thorax area. Of course, the other hand, you know, some people tie on a rotary vise, and then you just turn the vise, and it and goes it, Yeah, right do very well. Take a section of this turkey wing, turkey tail, I guess it is. Mm -hmm. I have sprayed this tail with an uh, art fixative. It'll make it stay together a little better, whether or not that's an absolute must or well, not. Is. Turkey tails are pretty fragile, and they mm -hmm. do tend to separate. I think spraying it with that fixative is a very It'll good idea. It'll help. What we're talking about is a fixative that you get in an art supply store that they use to put over charcoal or pastel drawings to keep it from smearing. Just right. And just it's just a, a light spray mm -hmm. on the back of the feather. It will do the trick. And it does very nicely. Now yeah. I've tied in both the wing case and the Cree hackle, and I'm going to dub a little bit more for the thorax. I have left that section of turkey butt section in there. You can probably see that on camera. This will just help that thorax build up just a little bit quicker because I do want that to be a little heavier. And there should be a distinct lump yes. uh, in the thorax. Yes. Now I'm going to go backwards over the, the wing case and into the hackle just to make sure that I have it all covered. I'm going to take the hackle and we're going to do it maybe a little bit different than some of the viewers have not seen before. Rather than tie it as a beard, I'm going to go around the hackle twice, or around the hook twice with the hackle. Get rid of that. I think this is the point here. There are a variety of ways to oh, put lots. legs on a nymph. Mm -hmm. You can put it on the throat style or a beard style, sure. where you can have two little bunches hanging down as what I call the mustache style. Either way. Uh, I like this way of doing it because uh, when you clip it top and bottom, it leaves the it's legs all, sticking out mm -hmm. to the side. Now I'll uh, just come in and clip that top off. You got to be careful here that you don't clip your wing case off. Or your thread. Or your thread. I'll turn it over and clip the bottom section off. And then all you have to do is fold that wing case over. You know, another little trick that uh, I sometimes do is after I've tied the wing case down in front, mm -hmm. uh, you can take your dubbing needle and you can separate out one fiber on each side. Oh, to make an uh, antenna? And make antenna. Yeah. And clip out the center section and then uh, cut the antenna to length, and that's sure. kind of cute, too. Sure. Make a little bit different silhouette, wouldn't it? Well, it just adds a little bit. Uh, no, I'll put a little whip finish on it. The antenna on a real nymph, of course, aren't that prominent. No. It looks kind of cute. And I'll get rid of that thread. We'll put a little bit of head cement on it, and I'll roll it around so the camera can see a little bit different angle on that. And again, we call this the Hendri or the uh, Quill Gordon nymph, uh -huh. but it's a just a good all-around representative nymph. I think that would work anywhere, uh, anywhere. There isn't that much difference mm -hmm. from between a lot of the nymphs that are. But you can see the little legs shape. sticking out here right. on either side. There's none on the top or the bottom, and it gives a very realistic impression. Yeah. I like that style. And there's the Quill Gordon nymph. We've used the uh, dyed mallard flank for the tail, dark brown dubbing, the Cree hackle for the legs, and the dark turkey for the wing case. Now for a complete change of pace, we're going to come out to the west coast and look at one of the local patterns for a steelhead fly. And this is a local pattern that I think is really of interest to it because of the person who developed the fly, uh, Bill Alsbach, who unfortunately had an untimely passing uh, just recently. This year? Uh, just this year. And it was one of his favorite patterns, one that he developed, and it's got the interesting name of Beats Me. <laughs> Beats Why don't me. you tell us, Leroy, how it got that name, Beats well, Me? Well, all the times I fished with Bill, we'd be catching fish, or he would, and uh, people would always ask him, Bill, what kind of fly are you using? And he had a standard answer, Beats Me. <laughs> and that's how the fly got its yeah. name. Uh, he did make some people angry with the Beats Me name, but <laughs> that's really what happened. Uh -huh. Material, we'll use a uh, large webby, hackle from a grizzly. The rear third of the body material will be the pink nylon. I have two different flosses laid out. One is uh, a larger floss that I'll use for a tag. The other one is a smaller, about a size 18 floss that I'll use for the rib. We'll use a, uh, a black chenille for the thorax area. The tailing will be a golden pheasant crest feather, has the natural upsweep. 
The tail is either white calf tail or gray squirrel uh, tail, or the wing, I mean, white calf tail or gray squirrel. And I'll use a black 6 aught thread. Well, what Bill hook also, are you using? what hook? I'm using the standard loop eye uh, black hook. Bill liked to fish these a little bit on the small side. He would go all the way down to a size 8 with them. Uh, this happens to be a number 4. I'll take the squirrel, I'll cut off a small section and then even the, the, wing, the hair. Uh, a lot of times you don't need to even this hair. A lot of it will come off really pretty nice, but it just makes the fly look a little better. Put it in the stacker and give it a couple of quick stacks. And it makes the tips come out very nice and even. Now, uh, I'm going to tie this maybe a little different for wing material than, than some of the viewers have seen. I'm going to tie the wing in first with the tips out over the eye of the hook. I'm going to fold those all in later. And I'm going to say that's a trick I learned from you. Uh, I always tied my wing in last mm -hmm. uh, with the butts coming forward. Mm -hmm. And, of course, the couple of problems. One is it's hard to make it secure. The butt, yes. And it's hard to make a neat head without and building the, the up bulk. butts will stick uh, through the eye of the hook. This, this yes. uh, technique of yours really solves those problems, and uh, it's the way I do it now. Now, I did not trim those butt sections off of that uh, wing material. What this will do, it'll leave just a little bit of a, of a smoother body mm -hmm. to put uh, well, you no. need that if you're going to use the, yes, uh, for the, the floss, floss body. That, yeah. I'm going to take just a little bit wider tinsel, and the only reason I do that is because it will build itself a little quicker as I make this tag. I'm going to go down. You want that tag to go a little around the bend of the hook? A little bit, not very much, but just a little, just to uh -huh. give it a little window dressing back there. And I'm going to come back over itself again and tie it off. And with every floss that, or every tinsel that I tie, I now have it locked in, but I want to fold it over one more time and bind it in. I don't know how necessary that is, but it gives me more of a secure feeling. I'm going to take the uh, golden pheasant and we'll use a, a feather, a crest feather for this. I can get one separated here. And you can see that this has kind of a natural upsweep to it to the feather itself. And I'll just get rid of this bottom section. And I want to tie it so that that natural sweep is going upward. You can see it kind of kind of moves itself to the up position. I'll get rid of that. And then I'll tie in the rear third. I use this uh, pink floss or pink thread. Now, you could put this thread in a bobbin. Uh, it might make it go a little quicker for you. I'll just use it with my fingers today. Well, and with some flosses, running it through your fingers frays it. It'll fray it's it pretty to have bad, in a yes. On the other hand, if you have it in the bobbin, it oftentimes twists rather mm -hmm. than flatten out, so it's a toss-up. You know, one thing oh. that I uh, have recently started doing with many of the flosses, most of the flosses, uh, change color when they're wet. Yes. And so what I've started doing is keeping a little bottle of uh, fly, uh, of rod building color preserver there. Mm -hmm. And after I wrap the body, I put a drop or two of color preserver on it, and that way it won't change color when it get, does get wet. Well, this nylon thread, this one is fairly heavily waxed, and I don't think it will do that. Mm -hmm. It might, but I'm not sure. Now, I went back. I forgot to tie in my tinsel rib, so I went back and tied that in. I'm going to take a wrap or two behind that tinsel rib, just to make sure everything gets covered here. And then I'm going to just go forward. I'll keep these wraps as close together as I can. Wrapping the body material. I'm wrapping the, the pink floss body material, yes. Will you, will you be trying to get a little taper to that, or do you want it basically straight? It'll be pretty straight. There will yeah. be some natural taper from the uh, butts of the wing that's been tied in, but not a great deal. You could also wrap this body material twice if you wanted to give it a little bit deeper or heavier look. Uh, I'll just do it once for now. I found that most of the steelhead flies don't have a lot of taper. No, to they that keep them when pretty the body thin. is tied that yes. way. Yeah. Now I'll bring the, the silver tinsel forward. And you do not need a whole lot of wraps of this silver tinsel 
four or five should be absolute tops. You don't need all of that. If you want a tinsel body, put and a tinsel body on it. For quality's sake, try to keep them nice and evenly spaced. Keep them as even as you can, yes. Now we'll do the thorax, which is a piece of black chenille. And I call it a thorax for a steelhead fly. It probably is well, it's, not. It's uh, just the front third of the body. The front third of the body. And then I'll take a grizzly hackle, and you can see that this is a very large, webby hackle. Now, I don't know if you mentioned it or not, but uh, I hope uh, the observant viewers noticed that when you tied in that chenille, you stripped some Strip of the fuzz out of it so that you were tying in only the thread. Just the string. And that uh, avoided bulk. Yes. And I'll take the chenille forward. And don't get up there too close to crowd that head and the, and the wing where it's going to fold over. I'll get rid of that. About two or three turns of this uh, webby hackle is really all that's needed. And I'm going to pull fairly hard on that. It's a thick stem, and I can bind it really down tight into You want that, it to go into the chenille, Into yeah. the chenille, yes. If you don't do that, you're liable to have it come loose when you catch yes. a fish. Which, of course, you will do with this fly. Mm-hmm. Then I'll get rid of that little section there. And now I'm ready to fold that wing over. What I'm going to do is just grab everything and move it to the rear. Then I'm just going to start wrapping in front of that wing section. As I wrap, it will just naturally bind it over. Well, it gives such a nice, neat head. Uh, very. As opposed to being all over the, the wing. And buttons. you can see, too, that I've left quite a little bit of room here for the head to the wing. That way you could riffle hitch. Mm -hmm. It just gives the leader more room to move around in that nice loop eye. And this one I'm going to put about three half hitches, two half hitches on it maybe, just to make sure it's all bound down nice. With my steelhead flies, I also, and I know Bill did the same thing, he would give the fly at least two coats of head cement mm -hmm. to make it really nice and shiny. Put one coat on it, let it dry, and then uh, put the other one on later. Get a little head cement yeah, on That's there. a nice fly. I wonder if, uh, I've got something black here. Maybe we could just hold this up behind the fly to let it show up a little bit better than it does against your uh, yellow shirt. Uh, okay. When we show the Let final fly, this here. is kind of going to be kind of crude, but I think it'll do the trick. Uh, Get the head seam out of the way. That's the finished fly. Let's just put that back there, and I think there you'll see it. I think you can see the fly a lot better. Yeah. The, the tail really sets itself off. The wing, the, that red nylon or pink nylon, shows it off very well. And that's the Beach Me fly. It is in memory of Bill Allspock, a super fisherman, a good friend tag of silver tinsel, tail of the golden crest feather of a golden pheasant, pink nylon, silver rib, uh, the black chenille, front third, grizzly hackle, and the squirrel tail wing. Well, that's our show for this week. Uh, we've tied a couple of classic eastern flies. We overuse the word classics, but the quill gordon really is a classic. And uh, we tied the Quill Gordon Dry and the Quill Gordon Nymph. Yep. And then we tied one of our favorite local patterns from uh, here in the uh, Northwest, and that's the Beach Me. Beach Me fly. I think any Bill place Allspark. that there are steelhead that that fly would oh, wear. Yeah. I, I have absolutely yeah. no doubt it would. And I can't even uh, tie the fly or use it without thinking about Bill no, Allspock, who designed it, the uh, honey of a guy. And uh, we all miss him and we appreciate what he's left us you in terms bet. of this fly and, sure and everything do. else. Yes. So, Bill, this one was for you. Well, we hope you can tie some flies this week and uh, be thinking about fishing and be thinking of what we've shown you. And uh, we wish you a lot of good luck. We hope you get a chance to go out fishing. And uh, we'll see you next week. Good night. Dave and Leroy have produced a new 90-minute video on fly tying techniques. To order a copy, call the number on your screen. These tips are only $28.95 plus $3.95 shipping and handling. Please have your credit card ready and call 1-800-883-0124 to order fly tying techniques. You can also order the programs in this series. There are three programs on each 90-minute tape for $22.95 plus shipping and handling. 
Call 1-800-883-0124 and order your fly tying videos or the techniques tape.